So we're going to do something a little different for a program this morning. We have some, we're going to kind of tell the Christmas story through Scripture. And so um, I'll read the first piece, and then in between each piece we'll have a song. And then when we've done that, the next person will get up and they will uh, read the title of what we're going to talk about and read the Scripture, and then we'll sing another song and so on and so forth until we get through the um, Christmas story. So, the first one comes from Luke 1, 26 through 28. <clears throat> and it's where Gabriel tells Mary that she will give birth to Jesus. It says this, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Now if you'll turn with me to hymn number 187, we'll sing the first and the second verse of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. 187. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sin. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel strength and Consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy peace. angel appears to Joseph in a dream. Scripture is Matthew 1 verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph her husband was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Our next hymn 
is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of hymn 191. Bethlehem, Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes, cloths, and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. If you'll turn with me to hymn number 200, we'll sing the first, second, and third verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem. Oh, 
stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace out our sin and enter in. Be born in us, we pray. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. The angels tell the shepherds of Jesus' birth, Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields there nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy, that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. In on earth peace to men in whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When he, they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. First, second, and third. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain.
our next reading is from is the wise men visit Jesus from our book of Matthew chapters 2 verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. <clears throat> About that time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet said, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not least among the ruling cities of Judea, for the ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time from the star first appeared. <clears throat> then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went to their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Hymn number 220, first and fifth verse, We Three Kings of Oriental. <laughs> have it, the story of Jesus' birth, in maybe a little less conventional way, but a reminder of the story of Christmas. You know, as we approach Christmas time, it's easy for us to get caught up in all of the commercialism of Christmas, the Christmas trees and the lights and the buying and the giving of presents, and uh, the big guy in the red suit and sometimes Jesus is kind of lost in the background. But it's all really about Jesus. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. And so what I want to encourage you to do is, 
as we approach these last few days leading up to Christmas, I want to encourage you to take some time to remember what an amazing thing that God did nearly 2,000 years ago when he stepped into his own creation to be born as a baby. Jesus gave up all of his power. He gave up his um, omnipresence, his ability to be everywhere at once, to be born as a baby. There's not much more helpless than a baby. To show us how to live and ultimately to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins.